half in the bag. One of these fucks gonna fix my VCR. That's that. Hey, look! Is it Jay Leno's chin? No, no, that's too big to miss. Oh. It's actually the Milwaukee Film Festival. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's go check out some films there, you know, ones that aren't the big dumb Hollywood movies we've been watching lately. That's a great idea. Let's go. <laughs> well, that was an interesting experience. I certainly feel a lot more enlightened now as a, as a a film fan. Well, now you can tell people you watched a movie with subtitles, mm -hmm. and you could you could seem like you're smarter or, or better than everybody. Yeah, else. well, movies with subtitles, you know, that means you have to read while watching the movie, so it makes you feel more intelligent. It makes the movie seem more intelligent. Well, if a movie's foreign, it automatically is more intelligent. That's true. Because foreign is, you know, it's different and it's, and it's better than everything. It makes you better too. For as, a, as a film fan, I don't watch foreign films on my TV because I don't even own a TV. Oh. So I only see films in the theater, especially foreign films. Right. You only watch foreign films. Mm hmm Because American films are just all garbage. Yeah. It's like uh, that movie Amelie. Have you heard of the movie Amelie? Um, uh, I've heard of it, yes. Oh, and then it's crap. Oh. Because I've heard of it? Yeah. Well, it played in, in major uh, cineplexes. I know. That's a bullshit fake foreign movie. Oh. Hi, and welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about two foreign films that you've probably never heard of. Yes. If you haven't clicked the X button on your browser, please do so now. <laughs> so we just got back from uh, watching a couple films at the Milwaukee Film Festival, which, uh, which was exciting. Yes. The first one we saw was Robots. Command mode activated. He's unbelievable. Like a <laughs> robot is a big budget Indian film about a scientist that creates a humanoid robot. Over time, the robot develops human emotions and discovers that they may be more than he can handle. Cue the musical numbers. <laughs> So, Jay, did you enjoy Robot? I, I thoroughly enjoyed Robot, yes. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, even though it was 175 minutes long, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was, a, it was a big feast of a film. But um, the first time I heard of Robot was I saw a clip on the internet, and it was called Indian Terminator. Yeah, I, it was, I don't know if it would be considered a viral video, but it was sort of circulating yeah. around. said it's basically about a scientist that makes a robot and the robot he, he the scientist tries to give him emotions yeah and then he gets struck by lightning yes randomly <laughs> that, that happened I had looked away for a second and I looked up and all of a sudden oh I think he just got struck by lightning it yeah. was like out of nowhere <laughs> yeah and that that of course is not uh, stolen from short circuit <laughs> um, Neither are any of the other elements in this movie. There's no elements them. in this movie that are taken from other movies. No. Other no, Hollywood no, films. No, it's a completely original, original <laughs> movie. May I come in? But um, the robot gets emotions and then he, he falls in love with the creator's girlfriend. Yes. So there's a little love triangle going on, which leads to dance numbers. It leads to some action scenes. Yeah. Um, uh, the robot is, uh, he, he's, he's like the Terminator. He has a metal skeleton underneath and some rubbery skin. Um, and, and he can also do anything. He could run along the side of a speeding train. He can fight people. He's super smart. He, um, has, he has wheels in his feet. But then he gets more emotions later uh, when a, a competitor scientist gives him an evil emotions chip, which is all those scenes that we've seen on YouTube, the Indian Terminator scenes where 
he becomes like a badass evil robot. And, and he starts making replicas of himself, and then the replicas start making replicas, so there's a whole army of this robot. Yes. So that's the general storyline of the movie. You know, it's sort of a, I don't know, Frankenstein's monster, Pinocchio, you know, every kind of possible Terminator. Terminator um, you know, even Data from Star Trek The Next oh, Generation yeah, the has kind of worked chip. in there. And the, the, every possible little element from, from big Hollywood movies is plugged into this. Um, yeah, I, I actually had a chance to speak with um, uh, Jack Roger Sakar, who is the, uh, he's one of the producers on the film. Uh, he was at the screening that we were at. Hi, we're here with Jack Roger Sakar, who is the Hollywood executive producer of the movie Robot. Yes. Very nice meeting, and it's nice to be here with you guys, yes. He primarily is the Indian Hollywood liaison producer. Because this movie was the, the biggest budgeted Indian movie ever, yes. right? And also we introduced for the first time a costume designer from Hollywood, Mary Watt. Yeah. Mary Watt is the one who designed Men in Black, and uh, in fact she's actually designing for uh, Men in Black 3. I was with her at New York. The Stan Winston studio did all the, the animatronics and stuff like that for the film. And uh, apparently this was the last film that Stan Winston worked on. Wow. Before he, he passed crazy. away. Some of them are like uh, the first time in the Indian cinema, actually working with the Hollywood uh, animatronics uh, effects and all those things. So Stan Winston studio on legacy effects from uh, Hollywood. More than hundreds of crew, they worked on this movie for three years with Indian crew. But I did ask him about the budget and where the money went and stuff like that. So would you say that that would be the, like the biggest milestone with this movie? I understand it's the biggest budgeted uh, Indian cinema film yes. that's ever been made. Yes. Again, uh, the, when you say big, biggest uh, budgeted movie in India, it is not very much towards uh, the technology that we spend, but the, all the actors and all, you know, you have uh, above the line, below the line, so we actually spend more on above the line than the oh. below the line. <laughs> so we got the superstar from India and Aishwarya Rai and you know, all that also, you know, part of the money gets, goes into them too. It's different. It's, well, it's, it's a different type of storytelling. It's Indian film. It's not just about the story. It's the, the spectacle. It's the, you know, it's three hours long. They generally have an intermission. Right. Um, at this screening, they didn't, but yeah, there's an intermission, musical numbers, uh, and it's not like a movie comes out there where it's like, you know, this is an action movie or this is a comedy. Like, right. It's sort of everything. It encompasses cinema, you could say, and that's why you can have a movie where, uh, you know, there's an attempted rape scene. Also, a, a whimsical musical number about being in love oh, in the yeah. same movie. It's a. I, I actually really enjoyed the movie as a story. It was really long. Like I was thinking about, uh, you know, a lot of times when a foreign film is remade in America for American audiences, a lot of time it's sort of oversimplified. They they sort of dumb it down. And I was thinking while watching this movie, like if this were to get remade as an American movie, they really wouldn't change that much. Cut out the musical numbers and trim the runtime. But it was a big, dumb, fun movie. <laughs> it felt like an American movie. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the musical numbers. I thought those were fun, uh, especially the last one where there were robot lions and, and many, many duplicates of Ashwari Ray. Oh, I yes. really enjoyed that. <laughs> the more Ashwari Ray's, the better. That um, was a great part. She she may very well be the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Hey, Robo, How do you feel about the action in the movie? It's very it's very Matrix style, very over the top. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking about that. Like towards the end, it gets really crazy when it's the, the all the robots are forming into a giant ball with guns coming out and then there's a giant snake, and then they turn into a giant person. All, the, all of them form together to form one big person. And uh, it's, it's really creative. It's bizarre, and it's sort of over the top and excessive, but it's at least creative. Yeah. As opposed to a lot of, like, you know, something like Transformers 3. Just people shooting Where it's just guns. lots of robots jumping around. There's nothing memorable about it. Right. Like, this is goofy and stupid, yeah. but at least it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun fun idea that all the robots form different shapes. Yeah, and, and it's well executed. It's like, something you know what's you haven't happening. seen before yeah, in the yeah. movie. 
And the actual story that's going on, of course, it's stretched out over three hours, but I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the way it unfolded. Uh, yeah. There's sort of an escalation of the action. It's not just crazy the whole way through. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I liked it a lot. And, and you like the characters, too. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes its time with... Um, with getting getting to like all the characters. So would you recommend this movie to to a general audience? Yes, I would. Unless you're someone that's just very, very opposed to watching a movie with subtitles. Because, yeah, you have to kind of keep up. A lot of times they talk fast and you're like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah. But if, if, you're not, if you're someone that doesn't mind subtitles, then yeah. It, this is a movie that can really play to any audience. Not that this is has anything to do with Indian culture. <laughs> um, but it's good to, to see other types of movies that exist. Sure, absolutely. So after the crazy, over-the-top, fun robot antics of Robot, uh, what did we see next? Well, Jay, the next film that we saw was called The Last Circus. And it's a film from Spain about a sad clown and a bad clown who both become mad clowns. Los niños se ríen contigo. No. Es que yo soy el payaso triste. Yo, yo no hago gracia. Hola. Hey. It's it's essentially about a guy who's a clown. His his father was a clown in in the the Spanish Revolution, the Civil War of 1937. Yes. Um, when, when the Franco regime took over, and he's forced to fight in the army briefly, and he, he hacks people up with a knife, and then <laughs> he gets put in a prison. <laughs> then his son breaks him out of prison by blowing a stick of dynamite, and then he gets killed by the Spanish general. Yes, and then specifically by the general's horse. Uh, oh, yes, he gets trampled, trampled by the him. horse yeah, and crushes his rib cage, and he spits up blood. And then the little <laughs> kid pushes the general off the horse, and the general falls on a spike that goes through his eye. Yes. So that's the backstory. And um, then the movie really starts. And then the movie really starts. Yeah, the, <laughs> it, it flash forwards to about 1970-something. Yeah. Um, and then he, he joins a circus, uh, a fucked up circus, where the, the, the head guy, the head clown in the circus is, is, is a psychopath. Well, this, this clown is the funny clown. Yes. Uh, our hero is the sad clown. Right. And the funny clown is the star of the circus. The whole thing revolves around him. He's what draws in the crowds. So he's the, the superstar. He's, he's, the, he's sort of the guy in charge. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes a lot of dark turns. Um, and, then, uh, and then it takes more dark turns. Yeah. Ah! Well, a love triangle develops between the acrobats. Very similar to robots. Well. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, uh, the acrobat woman. The movie goes off the rails, yeah. so to speak, very much at a certain point. But the whole time, I, I enjoyed it um, very much so. Sure. Visually, it, it, it's a great movie. Oh, um, yeah. Well, I love that it's, it's, it takes place in the circus, but it's shot like a war movie or something. Like, yeah. A lot of handheld camera work, very desaturated colors. Yeah. It's very yeah. bleak looking. It, it was it was enjoyable to watch, but I'm I'm like, what the fuck? I, I was yeah because the first half of the movie is 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 different than the second half. Yeah. Um, it kind of feels like the second half kind of took this different turn, and not just in terms of the movie, but the characters. Yeah, yeah. Like the the main character goes nuts, but it just kind of comes out of nowhere. Like he's awkward and weird early on, but he's not a psychopath. Yeah. And the movie just sort of becomes like a bizarro cult movie in the second half. It's just like filled with possibilities for, for visual metaphors, for, for metaphors about things, because you got circus, you got religion, you've got all these things in there, uh, war. So there was just like lots of visual symbolism all over the place. And then after a while, I'm just like, <laughs> 
<laughs> just sort of sort of overload in that department. I, I didn't know what what the movie was exactly trying to say. And yeah. There could be a language barrier, uh, language and culture um, barrier, but. But visually, it was great. Well, there were moments like with the circus. It kind of reminded me of like a like a Jean Pierre Genet movie with like the it takes place in the circus, and there's all these quirky characters. There's the guy who's trying to do the uh, evil Knievel type bike jump, yeah. and he keeps hitting the wall, and and that's sort of whimsical and charming. But then there's really like fucked up like sex while beating the woman scenes, and and really dark, weird nonsense like that. So, yeah, yeah. Like all over the place in a really interesting way. Like, you're not going to be bored watching this movie. No. You're no. just going to be confused. ¿Por qué quieres ser payaso? ¿Y usted? Porque si no fuera payaso sería un asesino. Pues yo también. So, would you recommend The Last Circus? Mm, not to grandma. <laughs> That's for sure. It depends on the audience, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's a very depends on the audience. It's, it's a dark movie. It's a weird movie. It's all over the place. And it's, it's violence. And it's fucked up. So if you like those kind of things, you'll probably enjoy it. I wish I could have seen more films at the Milwaukee Film Festival 2011. Why didn't you see more? I had cataract surgery. I heard a lot of movies. Oh, we were there. You just didn't. I see. Right. I had bandages over both of my eyes. Mm. They decided it would be best to do both cataract surgeries at the same time. The doctor said he thought it would be funny. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So I did go to all the films, but um, I, I did not see them. The worst was the silent film. Mm. Uh, I really had no fucking idea what was happening in that movie. So have you ever been skydiving? I've never been skydiving, no. I, I know someone who's been skydiving. Oh, yeah? Or was it just someone I pushed out of an airplane? So I wish we could have seen more films at the Milwaukee Film Festival, but you know, maybe next year when we have a little more time, something mm, like that. Mm. Time, that reminds me. I forgot to tell you. What is this? I invented a time machine. What? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about that? I don't know, I just never found the right time. Oh my God. Yeah, it works like this. You, you activate the time beam and then- Oh, oh Jesus oh, Christ. I'm so sorry. Oh gosh, actually, yeah, that, the time beam will give you cancer. Oh, Christ. How long does it have to be pointed at you to give you cancer? Um, it's actually measured in, in milliseconds, or was it microseconds? Anyway, I'm very sorry. You should probably go see a doctor as soon as you can. It's most likely going to be a malignant brain tumor. I'm pissed about the cancer. I'm really sorry, but anyways, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Holy shit. You know what we could do with that? Go back in time so that we could be extras in the Mel Gibson film, The Patriot? No, no, you fucking retard. Remember that party we had a few weeks ago? And while we're there, we could tell Heath Ledger that he's going to die. But the funny thing is we'll tell him he dies in a different way. I'm uncomfortable with all of this. No, no, you remember that party we had a few weeks ago? Yes, I remember the party we didn't remember. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Oh. That's the night the VCR was stolen. Yeah. What if we went back in time to that party and took the VCR before it gets stolen? What are you getting at? What if we went back in time to that party and took the VCR before it gets stolen? That, my friend, is a brilliant idea. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. But yeah, you're right. That's a brilliant idea. Let's go! Oh, why did you freeze? Oh. I don't know. I haven't hit the button yet. I just, when I think of old TV shows, they freeze and then they yeah. disappear. But... Well, you know, this isn't that. Oh. This is a highly technological piece of equipment. It's calculating the time circuits. And How fucking time long does that take? And... <sighs> At least a minute. Jesus Christ. What are you so anxious about? What am I about? supposed to do? Just sit here until that thing well, takes us back in time? It's about ready. God, you're so fucking impatient with the time machine. Fucking stupid idiot. Let's go! Wow. I don't remember any of this. But who would have thought we could throw such an awesome party? Who are all these people? Look, there's the VCR. Yes, let's get it. All right.
Snap on him. Yes, stick to the yes, mission. the VCR. Okay. I'm gonna get it. I got it. All right. <clears throat> Nothing to see here, folks. Just uh, leaving with the VCR. Yep. I'll be right behind you. Oh, Just right. go ahead. Okay. Just go ahead. Jay. Oh, uh, I'm gonna come now. Did anyone bring the Heathcliff DVDs? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Oh wow, look, it worked. Yeah, we got the VCR back. Yeah. You know, I just thought of something. What's that? What if it was us that stole the VCR all along? Oh, I think you just melted my brain. It's called a causality loop. What does that mean? It means that we created the problem that we tried to fix. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna go kill myself now. Oh my god! Holy cow! Holy shit, look! It's Lady Gaga! I love your music! Who? No, no! I'm Plinkett's great, great, great grandson, and I've come from the future! But wait, Mr. Plinkett says he doesn't have any children. He doesn't, yet. In a few years, he gets a little bit freaky with a prostitute. Ew. I hate my great, great, great grandmother. Anyway, hand me the VCR! Why would you go back in time for a VCR? Hey, that's what we did. Oh, yeah. Where I come from, those things are highly sought after by collectors. Why, I could probably get about a billion space dollars for that one right there. Now hand it over. Yeah, but why do you want that VCR specifically? Number one, it's broken. And number two, you can get a VCR anywhere. Any thrift store will have like 10 of them for sale. They're just like five bucks. Shut up! Stop asking me perfectly logical questions and hand over that thing. All right, fine, here. Oh shit, I broke my time machine. I can't get back to the future. Well, that's a pickle, isn't it? Well, I'm off to the whorehouse. Hey, what's going on here? Who's that guy? He looks just like me. I don't remember having a twin. After, after I was born, my mother said she wasn't going to have any more because she didn't like me very much. She didn't, oh! oh! I no longer exist! Oh, oh my groin! <laughs> <laughs>